children. Hi guys. I'm Sam and today we're in a mushroom farm near Cambridgeland all about mushrooms and find out how they go from this mushroom farm to your fork. Now this place is amazing. It's pretty high tech. It's full and full of tunnels which are packed full of mushrooms which are growing this very, very second. Meet our guide for today. He's Mike. He's a mushroom farmer. So he's the perfect person to share his growing secrets. Mike, thank you so much for having us here. You're welcome. First of all, we need to explain these outfits because okay. the children are probably going, they look a bit silly. Well, they feel a bit silly <laughs> to be fair, but the hair nets are to protect us, to protect the food that we supply to people. Uh, we don't want anyone to find a hair in the food. And the coats simply are to protect our personal clothing, but the main thing is they're protecting our, uh, the mushrooms from our personal clothing because somebody could have give the, give the dog a cuddle or the cat a cuddle before yeah. they came to work to say goodbye. So we put a coat over them to protect them. Yeah, you don't want anything in your food, do you? I quite like my outfit. Can I keep it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Each their own. Um, tell us a bit, a bit about what we're going to see here today on this field trip. Well, what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you some various different types of mushrooms. I'm going to show you what or how we grow the mushrooms on my farm and hopefully give the kids back in the schools some tips to grow their own. Fantastic, lovely, lovely. Should we meet our children that we've got with us today, our schools? Let's, let's go over to our schools. First of all, let's go over to Nidri Mills School in Edinburgh, where Miss Miller's class is waiting to say hello. Hello, children. Hi, guys. Let's go over to Skerry's School, where Miss Babin's class is waiting. They're in the Shetlands, right up there. Hello, children. <laughs> it's Shay. Hey. hey. Let's go over to St Thomas's School, where Mrs Westhead's class are there in Winchelsea. Hello, children. <laughs> lovely, oh. lovely big shout there. They look lively. They're very lively, Mike. And um, thank you so much for taking part. Now, I know a lot of you have already been learning about mushrooms in your classroom. So, should we put them to the test, Mike? Should we find out what they've learned? Absolutely. Let's go over to Nidri Mill School now and find out some of the facts that you've learned about, about mushrooms already. I have learned that mushrooms aren't a plant or an animal. In fact, a mushroom is a fungus. Some we c there are lots of different varieties. Some we can eat and some we can't. That is such a great fact. One of the children there just said that, that, that it's actually a fungus, a mushroom, mm -hmm. and Absolutely. there's lots of different varieties, yeah. and some of them you can eat and some of them you can't. Some of the wild mushrooms are poisonous, yeah. Yeah, you have to be very careful. Do we have another fact, Miss Miller? I have learned that mushroom seeds are called spores and they grow best in dark, damp places. Yeah, that's great. Um, that mushroom seeds are called spores and they grow better in the dark and the damp. Correct. Very, very well done, comrade. Um, have you, do we have one last um, fact there, please, Miss Miller? I have learned that fungi have no chlorophyll, so they don't need sunshine to grow and thrive. That's a very, very good fact. Yes, yeah, so and mushrooms, they don't have chlorophyll in them, so they don't need the sun to grow. Absolutely not. Sunlight actually hurts them. Ah, OK. So that's why they're not green. It'd be funny. Mm -hmm. imagine, imagine green mushrooms, because it's the chlorophyll in uh, leaves and plants that make them green, isn't it? That's right. And the sunlight changes the photosynthesis. The very, very clever. Great facts there. I've been learning about mushrooms as well mm -hmm. this week, Mike. Um, I learned that a mushroom spore is made from a, a substance that's so hard that some scientists believe that they would survive in outer space. I Did believe, you know that? I didn't know it, but I believe so. Do you believe it? Mm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I've stumped Mike. Yes. In fact, so I think the children are probably thinking, wow, what is in front of Sam and Mike right now? There's quite a few different types of mushrooms. Could you talk us through them, Mike? Mm -hmm. And classes, while Mike is talking us through the mushrooms on the table here we've got in front of us, you should have some bowls of mushrooms in your classroom. So pass the bowls round, take a little look at them. Um, notice the differences and similarities between the different types. Maybe have a little smell. Um, and uh, we'll talk about them a bit later on. But Mike, talk us through what you have here. There are so many varieties. Well, what we've got here is all the white mushrooms that you see on the table and in the trays in front of us. We actually grow on my farm here. And then um, these are the standard closed cup mushrooms and these are the large open flats. Both the same species, but just one is more mature than the other and a slightly different wow. harvesting technique. So they're exactly the same mushroom. So this, this beauty was we'll, we'll this. We'll grow into that. Wow, Absolutely. that is great. And so what are some of the other mushrooms at the front here? We've got some chestnut mushrooms, which are very similar to, to the white mushroom. A little bit stronger taste, a little bit more of a woody taste to them, but in essence, very, very similar to these. Okay. We've got some shiitake mushrooms. We've got some dried shiitake. 
grey oysters, yellow oysters, pink oysters, and these are autumn chanterelles and some more dried mushrooms here. These have been grown in, in the UK, but originally the, the, they originate from China. I was going to say shiitake doesn't sound very, no. very English, does Not it? At all. So how would these be grown? Because I, I kind of recognise, when you look at it like this, I recognise that. From well, in, in the wild it would grow off, off um, a tree, basically, off the trunk of a tree, That's so you'd see I've it attached it. to there. And they grow off slightly different compost than we grow. Our mushrooms grow off a compost which is made out of wheat straw. These mushrooms, when they're grown con commercially, are grown on wood shavings. Fantastic. And so these um, underneath here, are they inside? And, and what are these called here, Mike? Well, what you've got here uh, are the gills of the mushroom and the spores of the mushroom, which in essence is the seed of the mushroom, um, are all stored in here. And when the mushroom opens up, these gills are look lovely and pink. But after about 12 to 24 hours, they start to, start to drop the spores. So that's the mushroom trying to reproduce, basically. So it's stood up normally. The spores will drop onto the ground and it's sowing the seeds for the next crop, basically. Wow, so they are, they're, they're being automatically planted. There's no need to plant, plant them at all. And so the gills, are they inside here now? I mean, if I was to sort of poke my finger, oh, there yeah. we go. They're inside there all the time. Yeah. And the mushroom will stay closed as long as it's got food and water. Once it starts feeling threatened that it's not got enough food and water anymore, then the mushroom will open up. It feels threatened, it thinks it needs to reproduce, so it opens up and it'll drop those spores and then that's it starting its life cycle again. Fantastic. So you do that? You force them to feel like they're not getting enough food and water? No, we don't force it, but it naturally happens. The water, the water does reduce throughout the crop and the food source reduces throughout the crop as well. Fantastic. And would you put all these in the same kind of dishes or different dishes? They're all, all mushrooms are very, very versatile. You can put them in anything. You can make soups, sauces, casseroles, even put them fresh in salads these days. Mm. The, the only exception is the dried mushrooms. Dried mushrooms don't look that pretty when they're, in the, no. when they're dried, but whatever you cook those dried mushrooms in, they'll soak up the flavours from, from what you're cooking in. So if you're cooking them with meat or other vegetables, they'll absorb the flavours. They'll go very soft, um, like a normal mushroom, but to the eye, they look a bit ugly. They're a bit ugly and they remind me of the sponges that you put in the bath. You know, sometimes you get the sponges that start really close up and then they just open up the longer they're in that's the water. Right, that's what they'll do, basically. Wow, it's very, very clever how it's done. Now, you might think that in front of us here we have quite a few varieties of mushrooms, but in fact, there are over 3,000 different types of mushrooms and toadstools that grow in the UK. Even cooler, there's one type, that, or some of them, that grow in the dark, glow in the dark, don't they? They do. You they don't do. eat those ones that glow in the dark, though, do you? You don't <laughs> eat the ones like. that glow in the dark, and there's several, several varieties of wild mushrooms that are poisonous as well. Right. So my advice would be, if you see a mushroom in the wild, don't eat it, don't take yeah. a chance. Yeah, go to the supermarket, there's loads to choose from, and just choose one that you like the look of there. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, at Mike's Farm, he only grows the edible, edible variety of mushrooms. So let's watch a video now, which shows you just exactly how they're grown here. How are mushrooms grown? There are thousands of types of mushrooms in the world, but only a small number are grown on farms. Thanks to high-tech facilities like Mike's, here in the UK we now grow many of the mushrooms we eat ourselves. And button mushrooms are the most popular. The process begins in a laboratory in Holland where the seeds, or spores, are planted in a special soil, which is then transported to Mike's farm, arriving two weeks later. Once the soil has arrived at Mike's farm, it is put carefully onto shelves in sealed tunnels. Here, Mike's team can maintain the perfect growing conditions for the mushrooms. It's a bit like mimicking the patterns of nature, but speeding the four seasons up. Mushrooms in the wild grow best just after an autumn storm, so this is what the team will be aiming for. Mushrooms are not fruit and they are not vegetables. In fact, they aren't plants at all. They are a type of fungus. A fungus is a different kingdom of organisms to animals or plants. There are many different types of fungi, but not all are as tasty as button mushrooms. Green vegetables grow under different conditions to fungi, Unlike plants, which need sunlight for photosynthesis, mushrooms can grow equally well in the dark or the light. Like us humans, mushrooms breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. And also, just like us, they need regular water to grow. 
Did you know that a mushroom is 95% water? 16 days after the soil arrives onto the farm, the mushrooms have popped up through the soil and are ready for harvest. Amazingly, they double in size every day. If we humans grew that fast, it would take us less than a week to grow from baby to full adult. Farms like Mike's have a dedicated team of trained mushroom pickers. Mushrooms are delicate, so they have to be careful with them. Once they've been picked, they are ready to be packed up and start the next stage in their journey to your fork. Wow, they grow really, really quick, don't they, those mushrooms? And we are now in one of the tunnels, surrounded by mushrooms, Mike. Um, tell us a little bit about what is happening here. This is just one of the tunnels that you have, and lots and lots of racks, I see. Yeah, we call these shelves. We've got 24 of these tunnels, and they've each got 16 shelves in each. Um, this crop is about 27 days old, so it's actually on its second crop now. It's a six-week cycle that we grow. And um, we take three crops off during that six weeks. So this is on its second crop now, about 27 days into the cycle, and we're actually harvesting this crop now. We'll harvest it over the next five days, so we're just constantly skimming over the crop, taking the biggest mushrooms off all the time and allowing the smaller mushrooms to grow on. Great, they all look different sizes. So what is the, the best size? Which one would you pick? I mean, is, is that the, the best size well, right Well, it now? depends what you're going to do with it, to be honest. If you were going, if you wanted the mushroom, uh, to be presented on the plate and stay in the shape of a mushroom, then you'd buy a baby button, very small. Um, but if you're looking to make a recipe, you're making a sp spaghetti bolognese or something, you're going to chop the mushroom, then the bigger the better, because it's just easier to chop, that's all. Great. It's actually, it's quite um, cold in here. I thought it was going to be warm to sort of make them grow. Is this, is this well, how they like it? At the beginning of, of the process, when we put the compost onto the shelf, then the rooms are very humid and very warm, and that, that grows the root structure of the mushroom, but once the mushroom starts to grow on the bed and we can see them and they look the shape of mushrooms, then too much humidity uh, damages the mushroom. So we have to reduce the humidity in the room and we reduce the air temperature as well because we don't want to force them to grow. We want them to grow at their own natural pace. Fantastic. Can, we, can I put my hands in there? Should we get our I hands can, stuck I, in? I'm I'll trying put, to feel it. Let me put my hands it's in. Actually, it looks like something from outer space because it's like mud or, or, or sort of peat, but then Loads of white stuff. I'll get a big, big load of white stuff. Oh yeah, you're stronger than me. Take a look at that. It's all white and gooey. And look, what are these like little round dots on there as well, Mike? The little tiny things. Are they little mushrooms? They're actually little mushrooms, <gasps> but some, not all of them will grow. The mushroom um, will only grow as many mushrooms as it's got food for. So the little ones will die off and they'll never grow any bigger. But this one's alive. This one will grow still. And this is the peat that we grow them off. I'm about to say, will it still grow now? We picked it. Will it, <laughs> will it still grow? It, to an extent, yes, but the peat actually isn't the food for the mushroom. What's, what the food for the mushroom is is underneath, and this is the compost. Wow. And the compost is made from wheat straw. Ooh. And that's okay. where all the food is for the mushroom. Okay. And is that what it, is it made of wheat and straw? Is that why it's called wheat straw? It's, uh, it's wheat straw and it's chicken litter, but it goes through a composting process and then it's pasteurised so that it's safe. So I'm all right. So <laughs> okay. it's, what, it's what we call a selective compost because, because we're growing a fungus, it's very easy to grow other funguses that we, we don't actually want to grow. Yeah. So we temperature treat the compost, which kills off all the microorganisms that the competitor funguses like to eat. Okay. But it leaves the, 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 the microorganisms that mushrooms like to very eat. Very clever, isn't it? Very clever. Sure and what's is. all this white stuff that comes down from the mushrooms? Well, that's actually the root system of, of the mushroom. It's called mycelium. And it's not like a normal plant root where each mushroom will have its own individual root. There's a massive root system underneath there and the mushrooms can feed from many different parts of the bed. So they're all connected? Oh, absolutely. Fantastic. So you did mention picking them. How, how do you go about picking these mushrooms? Is it done by hand or is there a machine? Or? It's all done by hand okay. because mushrooms bruise very easily. Um, we've, we have yet to invent a machine that can pick them. It's a selective process as well, so we can't just pick every mushroom. So it needs some intelligence to decide which mushroom to pick. But once it comes to picking them, they're very, very delicate and they bruise very easily. So a machine can't do it yet. We hope, okay. we hopefully one day they will <laughs> be able to. But the technique to pick them is, is just pull and twist, basically. So hold the mushroom, yeah. pull it up and twist at the same time. Oh, lovely. Very nice. And I guess because they're very delicate, how do you make sure that you don't... Well, we, ha damage them. we have to be very careful when, when we're handling them. They can't pick them and trim the, trim the stalk off and then throw them in a punnet, otherwise yeah. it'll bruise. So we have to place them in the punnet carefully. Really carefully. Absolutely. So it's a long process. Yep. And I guess if they're so delicate, you can't water them from above. 
we can't we do water them from above we've got a, we've got a watering system underneath the shelves okay. but we don't water the mushrooms once there are mushrooms on the bed we only water the compost and the casing soil when there's no mushrooms there once there's mushrooms there we have to stop watering because water damages the mushroom okay so there's no other process for this now it's not going to get warmer in here at any minute this is this is how they stay now until they're picked this is how the uh, how it stays we'll warm the room up slightly as we go through the process because the compost generates quite a lot of heat itself um, but that activity dies down as you go through the crop so we'll just raise the air temperature to support the compost because they feed better at warmer temperatures so compost temperatures above sort of 22 degrees c um, are great for feeding the mushrooms anything below that and the mushroom doesn't feed that well great. so we we manage the air temperature to manage that compost temperature to 22 degrees basically so how many people would be in here picking all these mushrooms the mu like mushroom pickers well, in this room, um, over the next five days, we'll probably pick about six tonnes of mushrooms out of this room. And each individual picker will pick, uh, and on, on average, at about 25 kilograms of mushrooms per hour. So at the beginning of the flush, we'd only have probably three or four people in. But on the busiest days picking, which is probably going to be tomorrow, we probably have about 16 people in this room harvesting them. So this is the calm before the storm. It sure like is. In here, there's I think there's one person down there maybe picking a few mushrooms, but tomorrow it's going to be crazy in here. It sure will. <laughs> Pick me a few tomorrow, won't you? Will do. <laughs> maybe, I think a good question is where you um, put them into once you've picked them. Is, there, is it something, something like a, you know, strawberries come in punnets? Do you put them mushrooms in? Mushrooms are the same. We put them into punnets. We pick them into punnets in, in the tunnel, in these growing tunnels. Um, we don't actually weigh them in the growing tunnels because we don't put anything into a growing tunnel that might create disease. So a right. scale could get mushroom spore or a disease spore underneath it and transfer that around the farm. So we don't have, we don't have scales in the growing tunnels okay. at all. Okay, great. Let's go over to uh, Nidri Mill School where Miss Miller's class is waiting. Do we have any questions there, Miss Miller, for Mike? What is the smallest mushroom variety? Great question. What's the smallest variety of mushrooms, Mike? It's a good question and it's a difficult one to answer to be honest because a mushroom will keep growing and growing so there isn't actually anything that I would say is the smallest type of mushroom um, because they will keep growing. The smallest mushroom we would grow on this farm would be that size which is about 20 millimetres in cap diameter but we grow them between 20 millimetres and 120 millimetres on this farm. And would that be tasty if you were to eat that? Absolutely. So oh. This would be just as tasty as the big mushroom. They all taste the same. Lovely. Let's go back to Miss Miller's class. Anybody else there, Miss Miller, would like to ask Mike a question? Do your mushrooms get transported just in the UK or do we go further afield? Great question, Stephen. Stephen would like to know, do your mushrooms get transported just in the UK or do they go further afield? Uh, they're just in the UK. What we try to do is we transport them as short a distance as possible because we want to sell them locally um, so the local people can enjoy product that's grown locally and uh, distribute them as short a distance as possible, basically. So um, we supply the Peterborough Depot, obviously, from this site. Um, well, no, none of them go outside the UK. OK, lovely. Um, anybody else there, Miss Miller? Why are mushrooms called mushrooms? Oh, what a great question, Chloe. Uh, we might stump Mike with this one. Mike, why are mushrooms called mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you have stumped me with that one, to be fair. I actually don't know the answer to that, to be honest. So what I would suggest is we throw it back to the children and they go on, they Google it, basically. Oh. And maybe they can come back and tell us. A bit of homework there for you, children. I love it. Um, one more question, Miss Miller, from your class. How long does it take to grow 200 grams of mushrooms? Well, that's a good question, Reese. Reese would like to know how long it takes to grow 200 grams of mushroom. It's a diff difficult question to answer, to be honest. Uh, a mushroom will double in size every 24 hours. But uh, the best way I can answer it, to, uh, <laughs> I think, is the day we fill the compost onto these shelves, 16 days later, 16 to 17 days later, we will pick the first mushroom. So we could pick 200 grams then. So I would say 16 to 17 days. Lovely. You'd have 200 grams or you could have well, you infinite could, numbers. You'd have 200 grams to start with, but that it's 16 to 17 days for the first mushroom, but it gets very busy shortly after that. Within three days of that, we'll we'll harvest like five tonnes of mushrooms wow. out of one of these rooms. Wow, they are brilliant questions. Thank you so much, everybody. Right, let's go over to St Thomas's now. Uh, Mrs Westhead, do you have anyone with a question? Unlike other plants, do you, do you have to water the mushrooms? Good question, Zola. Zola would like to know, do you have to water the mushrooms? Uh, yes, we do, but we have to water the mushrooms before the mushrooms are actually there because once the mushrooms are actually there, 
water damages the, damages the caps of the mushrooms and it makes them discolour. So we have to use um, the water before the mushrooms are actually, you can actually see them. And that's why we use peat, because we need, normal soil's not good enough, because we need a peat, which is very similar to what you'd pot your plants in at home. And the, the reason why we use that is because it will absorb a lot of water quickly and it will hold on to that water, but it will also release it readily to the mushroom. Oh, that's magic. <laughs> okay, do you have an, um, anyone else, um, Mrs Westhead? What types of mushro mushrooms do you grow? <laughs> Good question. Taylor would like to know what type of mushrooms do you grow, Mike? What we grow on this site is, is the common white mushroom, basically, which is, the, which is the most popular mushroom throughout the world, to be honest. Um, its technical name is Agaragus bisporus. Oh, that's a bit technical, yeah. <laughs> a bit long. Don't ask me what it means. <laughs> but yes, we're, ju we're just common whites, so we do the, the full range of common whites. So it's uh, from a baby button to a closed cup. We do a class two mushroom as well, which is good for, for chopping up and putting in recipes because it might be a little bit misshaped. Have you ever tried to grow any other types of mushrooms just for I've you grown, to eat? We've, we've grown, I've grown chestnuts in the past. I've never grown exotic mushrooms, although I do know, know people and I do have a little bit of knowledge about how to grow the exotics. But whites and chestnuts, no problem at all. We're actually going to grow some uh, chestnuts in the second phase of this farm. We're building uh, some more tunnels at the moment. I'm going to grow chestnuts in that phase. Yeah, how many tunnels do you have now? At the moment we've got 24 and that, yeah. that provides us, or we grow about 80 tonnes of mushrooms wow. each week off the 24 tunnels. And we're halfway through building another 24 tunnels. Oh. So by the end of this year we'll be growing 160 tonnes of mushrooms every week off this site. That's a lot of mushrooms, isn't it? Uh, Mrs Westhead, do we have anyone else? How many recipes can you do with mushrooms? Oh, that's a great question. I want to know this. How many recipes can you do with mushrooms? You can do hundreds of recipes. Anything that you're cooking whatsoever, you can put, you can add mushrooms to. They're a great additive to any recipe. They absorb the other flavours of the other of the other ingredients that you're cooking with, and they're just so versatile. You can eat them raw in salads. So you name it, you can put mushrooms in. People are generally frightened to, to use mushrooms, but spaghetti bolognese, soups, sauces, casseroles, stews, you name it, you can put mushrooms in it. Apart from breakfast cereal. <laughs> We have one last question, Mrs. Westhead. No, I think that, that we that's our last question. You've got all your questions. Okay, lovely. They're great questions, aren't they? Mm. Fantastic. Now we know more about mushrooms and how they grow here on Mike's farm. Let's find out how they get from this farm to your local store ready for you to eat. Mushrooms from farm to fork. Once the mushrooms are ready, it's time for Mike and the team to start picking. Timing is especially important when it comes to the harvest, because the mushrooms grow so quickly. If the team aren't careful, by the time the pickers reach the end of the tunnel, the mushrooms have grown too big. But the farmers have to be delicate as well as quick. Mushrooms are soft and will bruise easily. They're picked straight into the boxes, called punnets, and the box they end up in will depend on their size and quality. Once the punnets are full of mushrooms, they are taken straight to the fridge room to cool down. Then it's on to the pack house for the next stage of the process. Because mushrooms are so sensitive, they are not washed before being packed into their boxes. So remember, you should always wash them at home before you eat them. Next, the boxes of mushrooms get sent down on this fast-moving sorting line to be weighed and double-checked for quality. Making sure everything is how it should be. The punnets are then wrapped up and labelled, before being put into large trays. From the pack house, the trays of mushrooms get taken onto a special chilled lorry. It's a bit like a fridge on wheels. And just 24 hours after being picked, they are likely to be on a shelf in your local supermarket. Loads to take in there, Mike. Absolutely fantastic. They are harvested really quickly, aren't they? Very quickly. 25 kilos an hour for, on average, but our fastest pickers would be picking 30 to 35 kilograms in an hour. That's crazy. And how long does it take from when you've picked the mushrooms here for them to be in the local stores? Well, we aim to pick the mushrooms today and hopefully they're, in, they're, they're on the store shelf tomorrow. Fantastic. So within 24 hours, basically. That's amazing. That is amazing. And how are they transported then? We transport them in refrigerated lorries. Uh, and just to put it into context, when I said a while ago we grow in 80 tonnes of mushrooms a week on this farm, if you can imagine a, 
an articulated lorry, they can only carry about six tonnes of mushrooms, so it's a lot of truckloads of mushrooms in a week. Yeah. Um, but they're refrigerated at four degrees because the mushrooms are 95% water, so the, the, the shelf life isn't that long on them. And plus four degrees Celsius keeps the mushroom fresh for as long as possible. And they're not washed at all, are they, before they go out of the factory? We can't wash them here because as soon as, soon as you do wash a mushroom, it goes quite slimy and it discolours the mushroom. So what, what starts out as a nice white mushroom soon goes rather brown looking and nobody yeah. would want to buy it. So the best thing to do if you choose to wash your mushrooms is to wash them just before you prepare them. Fantastic. And also another great tip that we, 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 you mentioned earlier to me is um, you should take them out of the fridge a little bit sooner, shouldn't you? Yeah, I, 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 when you get a pre-packed pudding that's wrapped in cellophane, I'd actually put, tear the cellophane a little bit to let the mushrooms breathe because mushrooms do breathe all the time. They're like human beings, they breathe in oxygen and they breathe out carbon dioxide. Fantastic. So yeah, because normally when you open the cellophane you get a waft mm -hmm. of, of the smell, don't you? So, and they're probably just trying to trying to breathe. Fantastic, right. Should we find out what um, what some of our children have learned? Let's go over to Scary School. Uh, Miss Babin, could you let us know what you've learned today? Are mushrooms exported from the UK? Well, could you answer that for us, Mike? Are mushrooms exported from the UK? Uh, no, not really. Uh, the UK tends to import quite a lot of mushrooms from mainland Europe. Fantastic. And you don't, you just... No, no, all our anything. mushrooms are, are grown in the UK, but we, as, a, as a nation, the UK doesn't grow enough mushrooms, so we, we, we actually import them from uh, Holland, Poland, etc. Fantastic. But we're British. Fantastic. So we're trying to grow British. Now, you did mention a lot of the recipes that you can do with mushrooms, but they yeah. are very, very good for you as well. They are packed full of minerals. Uh, they're low fat and they're also because they're not technically a fruit or vegetable they're a fungus but they do count as one of your five a day of fruit or veg don't they they're yeah. that good for you oh, absolutely they won't do you any harm whatsoever how many how many do you eat how many mushrooms do you eat a week mike i i wouldn't like to put a figure on it to be honest but basically whenever i'm cooking it whatever i'm cooking it will have some mushrooms really? in somewhere yeah <laughs> beans on toast <clears throat> with mushrooms absolutely yeah. oh, simple things like just uh, cooking uh, some mushrooms, simple mushrooms in a little bit of cream and then have mushrooms mm. on toast for instance. But Lovely. Very nice. What's your favourite uh, <clears throat> recipe? Favourite recipe would be using a large flat mushroom and what I would do is I would season it with a little bit of salt and pepper first and then pop it into the oven on 190 for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes maximum, bring it out of the oven. By this stage this, all the gills will be submerged in water. Don't be afraid of that, just tip it down the sink. Okay. But then stuff it with some lovely Welsh goat's cheese. Oh. Take a piece of parma ham, scrunch it up in your hand and put it on top. And then put, put it back under the grill and just finish it under the grill. Let the parma ham just start to crisp and then it's ready. And the combination of the three flavours is just absolutely oh. beautiful. Is anybody else's mouth watering, children? My mouth is watering. <laughs> I'm going to come round to your house for dinner one time. Would you cook me that? More than welcome. <laughs> I'm guessing it tastes even better if you've grown the mushrooms yourself. I would say yes, but I think maybe that's a little bit psychological, to be honest, that it just feels better because you've grown it yourself. Giving yourself a nice pat on the back. Uh, talking of which, those of you who had signed up um, should have a grow bag to grow mushrooms in your classroom. So best of luck with that. Mike, have you got any tips for our children? They have grow bags in their classrooms? Yeah, absolutely. Keep them out of direct sunlight because sunlight actually harms the mushroom. In the early stages when you can't see any mushrooms, then keep it warm and keep it wet but don't flood it with water. You just want the water to go down to the bottom of the soil on top. It doesn't need to go into the compost underneath, otherwise it'll rot the roots underneath. So water it very little, but very often. And pay very close attention because it, they do grow really quickly. And if you let them dry out, it's finished. They won't grow. Okay, so children, maybe do like a little rotor system. So at least one of you at any point is checking the mushrooms just to make sure that their eyes aren't taken off the mushrooms. Okay, we're almost coming to the end of this online field trip. Uh, we've just got enough time to head back to our schools now and find out what you've enjoyed the most about today's lesson. So let's go to Nidri Mill School, to Miss Miller's class in Edinburgh. I've mostly enjoyed Mike answering all our questions. They've liked you answering all the questions, Mike. Thank you. He did very well, didn't he? He knows a lot about mushrooms. <laughs> Great one. Let's go over to Scary School to a Miss Babin's class. I like the video clips. Great. They're my favourite too, actually. 
the video clips are the best oh, bit. Right. Not us, Very Mike, good. the video clips. <laughs> uh, let's go to St Thomas's School where Mrs Westhead is there with her class. Hello, everybody. About seeing the mushrooms being picked. Oh, yeah, I enjoyed that bit as well. They, they've enjoyed seeing the mushrooms and how they're picked. Because right. I didn't know how they were picked. I, I thought it was a machine. And Lots not, of people not think hands. they're grown in fields, to be honest. Yes, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Mm. Well, thank you so much for taking part. We really, really hope you've enjoyed it. Mike, one last question. What's the best thing about being a mushroom farmer? Uh, I think it's quite labour intensive and I like working with people, to be honest, so that makes it nice for me. Uh, it's quite difficult because you're growing a fungus and you're manipulating the atmosphere in the room and it's quite challenging and it's so quick. They grow so quickly, they double in size every day, so it keeps life very interesting. There's never a dull day. No, never. <laughs> well, we hope you've enjoyed this online field trip and learning all about mushrooms. Don't forget there are plenty more online field trips to come. And if you'd like to take part in a farm to fork field trip, just like these children that you can see having lots and lots of fun, then do get in touch. All the details are on the website. It really, really is an amazing time. So get in touch and we'll see you next time. Bye from me and Mike. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, Nidri Mill School. Bye. Bye, Bye. Bye. Bye, Miss Babin. Bye. <laughs>